what's up guys? Today, uh, another personality video. Uh, I want to make a case that your sun sign in astrology actually has nothing to do with how emotional you actually are. Uh, remember, the sun is your ego. It's uh, the expression of your personality, what you want to sort of show up as in the world. It's that self-centered part of yourself uh, that wants to be seen. And so, obviously, there are different sun signs that want to be seen more than others. And that may indicate how uh, egotistical they are, you know? I, I, I certainly make a case that uh, fire signs are the most self-centered, the most egotistical, uh, the most likely to want to be seen as that style of expression that their ego sign their sun sign indicates that they would uh, put out, project into the world. Um, but remember, the ego is that thing that we could kind of relate it to, you know, the um, the, the cortex in the brain, the prefrontal cortex, um, that uh, is the thing that expresses whatever is boiling beneath the surface. It's the thing that that emotionality that's deeper down um, is filtered through. Uh, it, but it is not equivalent to that which is bubbling beneath the surface, right? Uh, that would be the moon. And also in um, also, also together with Mercury, uh, is how you process things. Mercury is really the rational side of your processing uh, of information and the linguistic expression of it. Uh, but the moon is really what you want to look to. The moon indicates how emotional you actually are, how volatile you are, how reactive you are, and what is triggered inside you when you encounter a situation that is either uh, threatening or or um, something that may make you, you know, excited in a positive way. So your sun sign, which is your ego, becomes smaller and more restrained and really less important as you grow older and more mature. That's part of emotional maturity is uh, learning to, um, you know, hold some things in and let other things flow freely basically assessing your environment and making a judgment call as to what is the most appropriate way to express yourself given a situation. And um, I, I kind of make a case that um, the earlier in the zodiac uh, year your sun sign is, the less restrained you tend to be in letting whatever is boiling beneath the surface flow freely. So Aries is the most reactive. Um, Taurus, although it's a fixed sign, can also be extremely reactive. Um, but that isn't to say that, you know, those two signs being uh, the first and second signs of the zodiac year are the most emotional. Um, that has to do with your moon sign. And I would say that because your moon sign is the emotional reactivity and the emotional processing of information from the outside, that fire signs tend to be the most emotional. Fire moon signs, that is. If you have a fire moon sign, think of fire as just the element of fire. Uh, it takes nothing to flare up fire. You pour a little gas on it, you give it a little wind, a little bit of oxygen, and it flares up. You know, that being said, um, Aries moon is by far the most reactive and most emotional of all signs, I would argue. Um, and But the style that it's expressed in on the outside can vary as much as there are different styles of egos, which is to say that there are 12 different ways, roughly speaking, that that can be expressed through the ego. And then also Mercury matters too, because that's the extent to which and the style in which you rationally uh, process and make sense of things. So, um, you know, I know an Aries moon girl who's highly emotional, one of the most emotional people I know. And uh, I, I will, I would make the case that um, you will not find a single Aries moon person who is not insanely emotional, but she's a Capricorn sun. 
So a lot of that tends to be buried and restrained because Capricorn is all about restraint. Uh, it's, it's ruled by Saturn, which is the planet of restraint and setting limitations and boundaries for yourself and, and being highly principled and, uh, and sticking to that, you know? So, um, it, it's very difficult because not only are these, um, signs, the, the sun and the moon in two very different signs, they're squared. So they have a naturally, um, you know, sort of volatile, uh, relationship with one another. So it's a very difficult uh, combination to have. It's also for someone who's very close to me who is an Aries sun sign and a Cancer moon. Cancer occurs pretty early in the zodiac year. It's uh, fourth and is the first cardinal sign and is also a water sign. I would say that water signs are the second most emotional, second most reactive moon signs next to uh, fire signs. Um, so a Cancer Moon is highly emotional too, and he has an Aries Sun sign, which means that he is very flamboyant, uh, very reactive, very expressive with regard to his emotions. And also, Cancer and Aries are also squared. Um, so his Sun and his Moon are squared, which creates a, a disconnect and uh, a butting of heads between his ego and his emotional self. So, very tough relationship to deal with, man. If, if you have your sun squared with your moon, what that means is that your ego expression and how you sort of want to show up and be seen in the world is really at odds and butts heads with your emotional processing center, which is your moon. So, of course, you can have a very reactive, highly emotional, highly volatile moon sign like Aries or, or Leo or... Um, uh, cancer, uh, you know, or, um, even, you know, people say Pisces, people give Pisces moon a bad rap. Um, but I would argue that there's a difference between feeling and emotions. Emotionality is what we're talking about here. Volatility, reactivity. Pisces moon isn't necessarily highly volatile and highly reactive. They're just extremely... They're, they're extremely feely. Ex, you know, they experience everything. They're highly in tune with their physical surroundings and spiritual ones too. So they have, uh, they may have big reactions, but maybe not on the outside. It depends on their, their sun sign uh, in that regard. But they just experience everything and feel everything on a deep level, which is to say that perhaps they understand everything on a deeper level uh, internally, but it doesn't mean that they're necessarily more emotional than, say, a Cancer Moon or even a Leo Moon or even a Virgo Moon. You know, um, we we tend to associate emotionality with uh, more, you know, more feminine energy, and Virgo is certainly a feminine energy, uh, and and so Virgo Moons can tend can also be. Uh, well, definitely the most emotional out of the Earth moons, but Earth moons in general, I would say, are the least emotional. Um, them and, and air moons, air moons are weird. Uh, air moons tend to be like, you know, big hair don't care. Like they're, they're airheads, you know what I mean? Like their, their head is, is sort of in the clouds. And when they feel something, they may feel it very... Um, very intensely, but it sort of blows over as air tends to do, you know, or it sits there in a stale way, like an Aquarius moon may, um, be, have like a don't care sort of attitude internally. Um, but they, they remain in that sort of that stale, uh, consistent state because they're a fixed sign, you know? Um, so, so anyway, you want to look to the moon to determine how emotional someone truly is. You know, remember if, if we talk about big five traits, emotionality, it comes in the negative and it comes in the positive. So positive emotion is, is about extroversion, you know, um, and then negative emotion is neuroticism and that breaks down into volatility and withdrawal and I would say that fire moons are by far the most likely to have um, withdrawal and volatility in, in high percentile ranges. Um, what the actual connection is between uh, 
you know, what, what sign, what constellation the moon was aligned with at the time of your birth and the, the chemical reactivity inside of you to things that you perceive as, as threatening or, or negative. Like, I don't know. Look, if you get bogged down in the mechanistic questions about how astrology works, then you're going to miss sight of why uh, it's, it's useful and uh, why it works. And that is to learn more about yourself and to better yourself as a result of that. So um, we're not we're not going there. We're not digging into that because ultimately, from a philosophical standpoint, you have to appeal to empirical evidence uh, to refute empirical evidence. But if you stay within the empirical realm uh, strictly, that is to say that you're operating on a shallow uh, level that loses sight of the spiritual benefits that. Things like astrology and even certain sciences like personality studies uh, in general, you know, big five can really afford you. So you don't want to get bogged down into that into that question. But look, if you want any evidence that, you know, uh, cancers on in general are no more emotional uh, than, say, Capricorns, look at what moon underlies that that person's personality, that person's ego. And you will see something boiling beneath the surface in a very different style or, or you know, a similar style. And I know plenty of Capricorns that are highly emotional, Capricorn suns that are highly emotional, but that's because they have a highly volatile moon sign. You know, I have a Capricorn moon with a Cancer sun, which is why I'm not that emotional in my expression oftentimes, but I also have uh, a cancer mercury, which means that my rational explanation of things can sometimes come off as being of an emotional and fluid cancery style. It's about, it's about style. It's not about what's going on under the surface. It's not about how emotional you actually are. That is a matter of the moon, and also remember how the moon is aspected, because aspects are really where the meat is in astrology. Um, look at the moon, look at how the moon is aspected, that will tell you the most about how emotional someone is. It's not about the ego, because over time you become older, more mature, more in tune with yourself, and more aware of yourself and your own reactivity to things. And, uh, which is to say that your, your sun sign matters less. You learn to suppress your ego when you have to, and to let it flow when it is more appropriate, whatever, um, achieves homeostasis, you know, both psychologically and physically for you. So anyway, that's my rant about emotionality in the Zodiac and in personality, uh, um, how emotional you actually are. What is boiling beneath the surface is a matter of your moon. Your sun sign is simply the tendency to let whatever is boiling beneath the surface flow, uh, whether more freely or in a more restrained, less flowy way. But regardless, the ego is not the meat of that emotionality at all. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Cheers.